Kate Dynamite, and today we're gonna be talking about how to complete the main quest over on the Archon, all three stages of the boss fight, and even more. Definitely stay tuned. But before we jump into that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, drop a like, and make sure you have notifications on to stay up to date with everything going on in Cold Warrior 2, Warzone, Modern Warfare 2, and any other future Call of Duty as well. Now, considering this is a zombies focused video, don't forget to check out the Juggernaut beanies available over on eBay. They were put together by Perk Lemonade. The link to them is, of course, down below in this video's description. And you put something together really nice for the zombies community, considering we have a two-year hiatus before presumably the next Treyarch Zombies iteration. So take advantage of some brand new Zombies merch before the winter begins. Now, here's what's going on with the main quest on the Archon. So what I really recommend is bringing a couple of different weapons to your experience. I would really recommend maybe the shotgun and maybe the combat shotgun, as you can see here on screen. The EX-1 also isn't a bad choice. I probably wouldn't recommend bringing an LMG. You'll probably end up finding one on the map anyway, or you'll get a pack much one out of the box. But your starting weapon should be something that you're going to end up keeping for the rest of your game, which in my opinion does come down to just a couple of shotguns or the EX-1 because they really do pack a punch during the boss fight, no pun intended. Now, I'd also start your match off with Aether Shroud or Healing Aura, and you guys will see why as we get deeper into the Easter Egg. But what you want to do when you first spawn into the Archon is definitely turn on that Rampage Inducer to really speed things up a little bit and get those doors open as fast as possible. To activate the Rampage Inducer here on this map, it is similar to Shino Numa where you have to shoot a couple of things, but instead of lanterns on this map, it's actually bullhorns. There are five to be exact. As you shoot one, they'll light up red. You have to do them in a timely manner though, because if you do not, you'll get an error sound, similar to the sound you get when you fail the wisp step over on Der Eisendrack from Black Ops 3. So shoot these five bullhorns, as you can see. They're all relatively close to each other here in spawn, and the final one is over by the Pack-a-Punch machine. So definitely keep that Rampage Inducer on for maybe a couple of rounds, just to kind of speed things up and get points as quickly as you can. Then go ahead and turn it off. But once you have a good amount of the map open, you'll notice that the Pack-a-Punch parts you need are highlighted for you. And it's similar to how they worked in Black Ops Cold War. Just pick them up and walk back over to the Pack-a-Punch machine where you can then begin a bit of a lockdown. So as you've interacted with the ghostly Pack-a-Punch machine, you'll notice a bunch of Storm Kriegers, different zombie enemy types. It could get a bit intense on this lower round. So make sure you give each other a little bit of space if you're in a co-op match. Take out all the enemies in front of you. I think it's even timed. And your screen will then flash white. Pack-a-Punch will now be available to you. But then you can place that mirror artifact you got from Shino Numa's Easter Egg right here on this pedestal. It'll then be swapped by the artifact that we saw in the Duran Fung intro cutscene, which is what Cortifex is within. Cortifex will pop out of that artifact, and boom, a dark portal will spawn in right next to you, leading you to the dark ether. Cortifex will have a bit of a speech, and then we'll insta down you. Don't worry, that's a part of the Easter egg. I know we all got trolled for the first time when we actually did this step on stream. It was hilarious. So once you get insta down, it'll keep talking to you, you get back up, and it'll teleport you back to the desert, where you'll now notice that that portal to get to the dark ether is chained shut, and you cannot go back through it until you've completed all three trials. The trials of mindfulness, resilience, and sacrifice. So the first trial obelisk can be found over at the Merchant Road, and what you want to do is dig up one of these little dig sites right near the obelisk, and a red orb will pop up. Again, you need a shovel to dig up, so I'll leave a guide for all shovel locations on this map down below in this video's description. So this challenge is a three-stage step, and it's similar to the Shangri-La tile step from Black Ops 1, where this red orb will show you three symbols. You then want to step on those symbols in the correct order, Order that it showed you. And the way you step on the symbols is simple. It's very similar to the purge objective that we've had in objective maps here in Vanguard. Step on the symbol and just let that bar complete and you've then grabbed it. Obviously on solo you can pause the game, but on co-op you're going to have to make sure you're efficient with remembering all these symbols. Maybe if there's three people in your game, you have one person remember each one. If you're in a four player game, it's even better for some of the next steps after this. But obviously I get it. If you go ahead and miss out what the symbols were and you just have a bad memory, you could always restart this step on the following round. If you fail a step throughout this entire Easter egg, you always have to pass around to be able to restart it. Now, the last person to touch a symbol here on the ground will get a challenge similar to Gauntlets from Black Ops 4 Zombies. I was the last one to touch one of these symbols, so my challenge was that movement will cause damage. So that one's not too hard. Just sit in a corner with your friends, take out all the rest of the zombies, and you don't want to click Begin on the same challenge yet again right here on this orb, but this time it'll show you four symbols. You want to step on those four symbols in the correct order as it showed you, and again on co-op, if one person remembers each symbol, it won't be that bad. Just go ahead and each remember one and then step on one in the correct order. Or if you have a great memory, you could just know exactly where to go during the duration of this step. If you're on solo, you can pause it, write stuff down, record, whatever it is that your preference is, similar to the Garad Krovi bomb step back from Black Ops 3. Now this time, Perka was the last person to touch a symbol, so he got a gauntlet challenge, which was that he could not regen health. You'll notice that on our screens, we couldn't see what his challenge was. Only the last person that touched that symbol was able to see it. Don't know if it's a bug to where maybe all of us are supposed to get that gauntlet 
gauntlet like challenge but for our experience and our first run through of the map this is what happened to us but once you finish that you can then activate the orb for a third and final time for the last part of this three stage challenge it'll then show you five symbols in a certain order you don't want to step on them in the order that it showed you so we had good communication in our four player game where each of us remembered one symbol and then we all kind of knew what the fifth one was since we all looked at it uh, as we were looking at the order but i think about maybe six to seven different symbols could pop up here on the ground definitely pay attention to that fifth one in case you guys are like oh I'll just remember one each no also remember that fifth and last one so you know exactly where to end this step and once you've done that you'll then get a gauntlet challenge for the person that last touched the symbol and i think perkle also grabbed the last one so he then got a challenge that said that zombies do double damage which is a bit risky but do keep this in mind for those out there that might be confused right now if you've gotten to the step already this is our first run through of the map in which we beat the easter egg so i'm counting on the fact that when you guys go and do this quest you'll probably end up getting different gauntlet challenges in your game upon doing the symbol step but now you can begin the actual trial of mindfulness here so all that we just did was just to activate that orb and to move it onto the obelisk to actually do the trial so now what you want to do is a purge like objective but with a twist you cannot damage a single zombie now there is a bar on screen to keep track of how much damage you've done to zombies and i believe it's intended for you to be able to kill maybe a couple but when we first did this step we weren't able to touch a single soul i mean if you pop healing aura it could damage some zombies uh don't throw monkey bombs don't throw gas definitely don't have that brimstone covenant it's really gonna fail that stuff for you rather quickly uh i know we had shown this shot a zombie i think maybe just one and it instantly failed the step for us so be very careful with what you're doing with these zombies the best way to get this done is to make sure everybody at once steps on one symbol because that'll just instantly grab it right if you have one person per symbol obviously the completion of those symbols is going to be relatively slow very similar to the purge step that we have in regular objective gameplay but once that is done you're ready to activate the next obelisk and the next trial which is over in the debris field so what you want to do is shoot these three red crystals that are actually out of bounds that's why they were hard to find when we were streaming earlier you want to find the three red crystals as you can see right here on screen i think in my footage you can very clearly see two of them there's a third one right here in this area right out of bounds you want to shoot all three of them and once you do that the next orb will pop up and flow over to this rock now the orb is going to ask you to collect three important items the first item is over here by the tens which is the officer hat and then once you grab the item though you actually can't run with it so if you pop ether shroud which i recommend that you have it earlier you can actually move a lot faster with this item and obviously you'll be protected by zombies as well when you pop ether shroud so it's important to do this because if not you're pretty vulnerable walking back here to where the orb is once again as a reminder you have to take each of these three items you pick up and you want to walk them to the red orb here sitting by the rock now while you're walking to the red orb you will also get a gauntlet like challenge similar to the last trial the one that i got was that killing enemies causes damage it'll be different for you in every single game that you play and this is where your friends come in to either watch your back or if you're on solo pop ether shroud to make sure that you do not get attacked while walking the part back to the orb the second part is the cursed femur this one's a bit trickier you have to actually dig this one up here by the derailment area of the map but he's shown dug it up here while we were on stream and it's right here by stamina up as you can see you just dig up the part and once again walk it back to where the red orb is and when i grabbed this part i got another gauntlet challenge which said that damage causes point drain you do not want to drain your points especially this late in the easter egg you want to make sure you have plenty of money to go ahead and at least get tier two on your weapons or close to max pack you want to upgrade your perks as much as possible so make sure you're very careful when you're holding a part during this step or whenever you get this challenge throughout the duration of your easter egg run through but the third and final part is a skull located here on a shelf which is by the diabolical damage perk the yellow perk located near the center of this map so perk ended up grabbing this one and he got a challenge which said that he had no health regen so he walked this one back all the way back to the red orb and once all three parts have been returned to the red orb you will now have access to the decimator shield located in the same location as it was on terra maledicta perka went ahead and grabbed it you can now begin the trial of resilience so in order to start this trial you have to have the person with the shield hold square on the obelisk and it will begin the challenge what you want to do is fill the empty perk fountain with blood that you can get from the broken sacrifice harvesters what you want to do is blast each of the harvesters with the decimator shield and once you've done that you can then interact to grab blood with a chalice and be able to walk that chalice over to the empty fountain to then pour some blood in there you gotta keep repeating this until you see the fountain fill up completely with blood you only have a couple of minutes to do this and the shield cooldown has been nerfed to 30 seconds instead of 60 as it originally was on terra maledicta and that's perfect because you needed to have a short cooldown for this step but definitely make sure that the person with the decimator shield has easy access to all of these sacrifice harvesters so that you can blast them as soon as he's able to and you guys can then collect the blood with your chalice and walk it over to the empty perk fountain plain and simple the third and final trial of sacrifice that is is over at the derailment section of the map near stamina up which you want to do is have somebody grab molotovs and light up these three torches that are located 
located in this area of the map, and the first two are pretty close to one another, a couple of feet apart at least, and the other one is located towards the entrance of this section of the map. Not that hard to find at all. Once you've done that in a timely manner, because again, you have to light them up relatively quickly so that they're all lit in sync, the red orb will then spawn in and sit right here by this train car. You then have to sacrifice a pack a punched weapon. I'm not kidding. So somebody has to take one for the team, or if you have a pack a punched weapon you don't care about, give that one up, or if you're on solo, just go ahead and pack a punch any weapon that you really don't mind giving up, and once you've done that, you can then actually begin the Trial of Sacrifice. Oh, and don't forget about the HVT Stormkrieger. Before you interact with this trial, though, what you want to make sure you have is Ring of Fire, and awesome enough, instead of just going to your loadout and switching it at the menu, you can actually hold Interact here on this stone right here, and it'll give you the Ring of Fire artifact, which is incredible. So the reason why it gives you that is something that we didn't really realize until after we failed the step and then restarted, is you want to go ahead and activate Ring of Fire around each of the new obelisks that have spawned here in this area of the map. You want to pop it right next to it and then stand in the circle while you kill zombies. It's a soul box. The zombies don't have to stand in the circle with you, but as long as you're standing in it, it'll then collect souls to charge up these obelisks. And then once you fully charge up an obelisk, you'll see a red line connecting that obelisk to the main one on top of the train car. That's how you know you've charged that one up successfully. Repeat this process for four total obelisks located here in the derailment section of the map and bring of fires won't be hard to grab full powers do spawn pretty frequently or you can just have your friends keep killing zombies with you and you'll charge it up pretty quickly now something our buddy perka just discovered as i was editing this video is that if you actually don't get kills with the ring of fire near these obelisks but instead just collect random zombie souls by the main obelisk in the center you know the one where you interact with to start the trial of sacrifice that will collect enough souls that'll spawn in a full power so i guess this is a rinse and repeat process to get your full power back as soon as you can since you are timed when doing this and on solo it'll take you a while to fill up your meteor again that's why on co-op this is easier everybody else can just pop the ring of fires on the other obelisk but this is a perfect strategy to go ahead and make sure you have full power available to you as quick as possible but just like the other trials when you're finished you'll get rewards like max armor ammo points everything you need to really get prepared for the boss fight since at this point in the easter egg you're about to go to the boss but make sure you've upgraded your perks as much as you possibly can if you're on a relatively low round go maybe a couple more rounds to get some more points try to get tier 3 pack a punch please try but if you can't keep in mind that we beat this boss fight with just tier 2 weapons so it's not the end of the world if you can't get tier 3 but also in terms of wonder weapons they are all available in the mystery box there are no quests as of right now time of recording this that exist to get your hands on a free wonder off or a free ray gun decimator shield you can get for free of course through doing that one trial but other than that everything else is in the mystery box now the field upgrades i would bring to this boss is for sure ring of fire or healing aura but definitely make sure you have at least two ring of fires on your squad maybe at least one person with healing aura that should do the trick for you but now when it comes to the boss fight court effects will become a giant which actually scared us at first when we were first screaming this he just popped out in our faces and it will begin phase one of the boss fight so phase one is very straightforward all you have to do is shoot his forehead which is considered his first eye watch out for his attacks though which can absolutely insta down you he'll throw a giant orb at you which can very quickly take all your health away and armor and just absolutely insta down your entire squad in one go similar to not putting down the Ragnaroks on time over on the Dryzen Drag boss fight. He also does these thunderstorm-like attacks, which will also damage you quite a bit. So throw out a bunch of bolts of electricity all around you, and if you get hit by enough of them, you'll also get down pretty quickly. Hopefully you had enough salvage, though, to buy a self-revive before you got to this boss fight. Fingers crossed on that one. Save up your salvage as much as you can throughout your entire match, because you're going to need it. Now, Court Effects essentially has all the abilities as the artifacts, similar to how the Forsaken boss fight works in Cold War Zombies. You could buy ammo, though, if you run out. There is an ammo cache right here in the middle of this area. The EX2 is phenomenal against Court Effects, especially when you pop Ring of Fire. You can just absolutely beam his first eye with that EX2. If you have an LMG with a lot of ammo in it, even if you don't have Ring of Fire, that can also do a good amount of damage. The shotgun can't quite reach his first eye, at least not from what I understand. It'll be useful, though, for the second and third phases, so don't give up on the shotgun just yet. But other than that, monkeys and decoys will come in handy if you have too many zombies behind you trying to focus on the forehead. You can go ahead and do that. And these little pods look like they're from the Shadows of Evil Scrap the Pothkin Easter Egg can also be shot because I think if anything they'll do damage to you if you walk across them so might as well get rid of them if you have an opportunity to just shoot them and they'll respawn after a couple of minutes but get rid of them if you guys get an opportunity to why not but once you've done that first phase there's a bit of an intermission where you can actually walk up to a crafting table repair your armor buy some equipment there is pack a punch as well but no perk machines so good opportunity to kind of refresh yourself on something you might need before you get to the second phase of this boss which actually is a little bit more complicated so you want to continue dodging his attacks that he 
does. And what you want to do during this part is destroy these red crystals on the ground as if they were loot from the desert area of the map. And you will see a shard drop every single time you destroy a red crystal. You want to grab a shard. It will now be in your inventory. You want to throw it at the plants because the plant will eat it up. And then after a good maybe 30 seconds or more, the plant will spit out a corrupted shard. You actually need those corrupted shards to do the next part of this boss fight. And once you have up to three corrupted shards, you want to throw them at the three rocks that are above you and in reach. And once you throw one shard at each rock, the rocks will then be sent right into Cortifex's force field. Since once again, in case you guys weren't aware, you aren't able to do any damage to Cortifex until you do this step right here. Once all three rocks hit the force field, he will now be vulnerable and you can then shoot his right eye. He'll actually fall a little bit or kind of be kneeling to where you're able to walk right up to him and use your shotgun or whatever it is you guys want. But also watch your step. People out there have fallen off of this part of the map so many damn times. It has definitely cost people actual boss fight runs. It has cost people a bunch of health. It has downed them to where they lost some of their perk upgrades. Be very careful with where you step here in this dark ether portion of the boss fight. But now we have another intermission before the final phase of the boss. Once again, make sure you buy armor. Make sure you buy equipment, monkeys, decoys, pack much if you have to because you do get a bit of money from doing each of these phases, which is awesome. But now you've begun phase three. It is actually the same as phase two for the most part, except for the fact that Quarterfax is now using the healing aura ability. If you're not fast enough with damaging him to fully beat the boss, then he will actually replenish his health and put you back to square one, essentially. By square one, I mean whatever health he had when he first entered phase three. You also have to watch out for storm creakers, which will now spawn during this phase. Luckily, this boss is accessible to new players. I wouldn't say it's as frustrating as Mephistopheles, but it's as epic as Mephistopheles, in my opinion, and I think this is Treyarch's best boss fight to date. So once again, make sure you break red crystals, grab some shards, throw them at the plants, and then once the plants are ready, they'll spit out some corrupted shards, and you want to throw those corrupted shards at the three rocks that are right above you and in reach. Those three rocks will then be sent into Cortifex's force field, and boom, you can then damage his left eye, which once you've done that enough, you have now completed the Cortifex boss fight. So upon finishing the boss, you will get an animated calling card. There is no cutscene, unfortunately. I am hoping that maybe we get like a slideshow at some point, maybe during the mid-season update, they add in a slideshow cutscene to at least depict what happens to Cortifex after you've killed him. I want to see Zykov consuming him becoming the Forsaken. That would be fantastic. And I could also assume maybe during the mid-season we'll end up getting some extra intel or radios added somewhere to kind of explain what happened after this boss fight is over. Because nothing really is said other than one voice line which says, you killed him. Yep, we killed Cortifex. That's about it. Now there will be some free loot that also drops by your feet. I think Taco picked up a free Wonder Waff. And then there is a portal you can take to get back to the desert. You can either choose to keep going for high rounds, you can wait for an Xville, or just end your game right there. That is the end of the main quest here on the Archon. But that is about it. This has been DK Dynamite. Leave our thoughts down below in the comment section. What are your thoughts on the complete main quest here on the Archon? What are your thoughts on the boss fight and the story implications of killing Cortifex? Really hope you've enjoyed and peace out, everybody.